Hello guys, the DB Grinder here, back at it again with another video, and this time I am here with Stardust01, and we are going to be talking about the bird deck, and let's just hop right in. Alright, thanks for having me, man, I appreciate it, glad to be on the channel. Yep, no so, starting off with this deck profile, uh, you'll see like when I did a couple of the, the combos, just the basic combos, the deck list was at 42. The only difference that I had in that deck profile was I had a second copy of Droplets and a second copy of Slowbird, which I cut out just for consistency purposes. So in the in the deck itself, uh, the main combo starters are the three Turquoise Warbler and really the the Barrel Canaries. Those are the the best two starters in the deck along with the new spell. Uh, you want to max out on the Turquoise Warblers at 3, uh, just because it's a free special summon when it's summoned from the hand or if you control no monsters. Uh, you want 3 copies of Cobalt because you want to see it. When it's special summoned, it just gets you a search for another level 1 Winged Beast uh, from the deck, which you can run a copy of DD Crow if you want a searchable hand trap. Uh, there's a couple of different extra texts that you could run. Sapphire Swallow is nice because it just has the bonus effect to be able to attach another material, uh, which can help with some of your OTK plays, and it just gets you that free special summon to trigger Cobalt's effect, to trigger the new uh, Wagtail effect, or to, tri uh, or to trigger Turquoise Warbler's effect, uh, just to get another special summon. Berry Canary is one of the best cards to come out in Synchro Storm just because it's that free extender and it allows you to end on something. Uh, even if you get into beer during the combo, you can always end on at least two to three interruptions uh, even through that and through a couple hand traps. The two Celeste Wag Tools, uh, you just want to keep it two. Uh, I found three to be very bricky, uh, especially since the only spells and that you run in the deck are the free bird call and then the new bird sanctuary which is just a one of uh, and i find that the bird sanctuary is necessary to have um just because it can get you a free draw one during your turn if you already open up the bird call and it just really helps enable your otk plays i opted this time just to run one of the slow bird because it can get you the draw to. It's a free extender. Uh, but you could also substitute it for one of the, the Kinkabayu, which is the level one that you normal summon and then can special summon a level one from the graveyard uh, just to get you a free Xyz play. Because a lot of the times, if your hand is decent, you don't even need to use your normal summon. Um, and there's times where I've gone through my entire turn and didn't even use my normal summon, and I could just end on something extra if I had something different. But this is searchable um, with multiple cards in the deck. Uh, next is where you can kind of change a couple of things up, but I run the three crossout designator, and I run a lot of targets for it because the things that hurt this deck the most are Nibiru, Droll, uh, Valor, and Imperm. And even droplets, just because when you go for your Zeus play. So all of these are one of that you can see in the deck that can still interrupt your opponent. Um, but they're mainly cross-out designator targets. And sometimes you draw into them and they can still help you as a going second card. The nice thing about Droll and Effect Veiler is, is you can just use those as a normal summon if your hand's not that great. Um, and just to extend out, just to get into your Recital Starling to get an additional search so you can pop off. Uh, we won the one called by the grave just to kind of also hit hand traps because we want to make sure that we are combos go through run the one one for one because uh, you can discard a copy of the celeste wag tool summon the cobalt use the cobalt effect to search the canary and then use the canary uh, to summon back the wag tool and then you can get the wag tool effect to search your uh, lyriless bird call or the other spell bird sanctuary and then you can use your Xyz plays from there, and it's just a one-card starter that gets you into so much. Uh, we run the one copy of Instant Fusion just because it's an extender for the one fusion in the extra deck. 
uh, which that's all it really serves as a purpose for as an extender in this deck. We run the one copy of Foolish, uh, just because it helps you like send Cobalt. Uh, you can special summon Warbler. I uh, use Warbler effect, special summon Cobalt back, get a search, and then go from there. Or you could send uh, Celeste Wagtoe, either or, and then use Canary to summon back the target. So it's just a good enabler uh, to get something from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, this card helps the deck a lot with consistency purposes, Jack in the Hand. Because it kind of doesn't really matter what your opponent takes from you because you're going to have a starter no matter what. Most of the time, I'm revealing a Warbler, a Canary, and then either a Cobalt or a Wagtail. Depending on what's in my hand, I'll just pick one or the other. 95% of the time, they're just taking Warbler from me, which is absolutely fine. Because you'll just get to use that effect later in the turn. You'll get a copy for that. So I just grab Canary to do my other combo and my extender. So you get to what you need no matter what with Jack in the hand. There's not a really a downfall to it. Uh, Prosperity helps you just dig for the cards that you need to combo off. Uh, you don't really draw in this deck. The only card that really draws in the deck is the Bird Sanctuary. It's the only card that has the effect to draw. So that's the only card that conflicts with this. Uh, I have it at two now because two is nice. You want to see it, but I found Three just doesn't really work with the deck because you need a lot of what you have in the extra deck. And a lot of the times when I'm banishing targets, I'm only banishing three because this uh, deck can end up turning into a grind game and you're going to need your resources. The last card in the deck is just a blowout card if you see it, which Prosperity helps you dig for it. It's Harpy's Featherstorm. All you have to do is control a winged, winged beast monster and you can just turn off all your opponent's monster effects for the entire turn, have them pass, and then you just OTK from there the very next turn. So if you just see this card and can combo off, you basically just win the game. All right, um, I have a few questions about the main deck. So um, first of all, uh, do you like only having six going second cards? Do you feel like the engine itself can go second versus like good end boards? Yeah, it can go second against good end boards. I did a match yesterday to where I was going against Tri Brigade, and they ended on an Appaloosa with three negates, and they had their revolt. I was able to fight through the four interruptions and just end up Zeusing their board at the end, um, and then I set up a Draco Future. So it can uh, it can play through it. I will say that. Um, the side deck comes in clutch a lot of the times because um, you really just want to go first. But if you're forced to go second, that's where you really got to make sure that you uh, win game three because you know they're going to make you go second. And that, so uh, game one can be a bit of a grind with only six. But you kind of need um, everything else that you have in the deck for consistency purposes uh, because unless you're going to throw Tri Brigade in here to make it more consistent... Uh, you don't really have enough room for any more hand traps unless you cut down on some of the cross-out targets to run more copies of other things. Do you think this deck will be meta post bowed Or do you think it's going to be more of a, like a fun deck? I think it's going to be more of a fun deck, and it can be rogue and catch up on people. Um, especially if people don't know what the cards do. Uh, it can sneak up on somebody, and you can OTK somebody. But because you're not really putting up uh, multiple like Omni Negates, uh, you can end on your Draco Future going first to get a Monster Negate. Uh, if you open up right, you have Feather Storm and you can OTK. But um, without having a lot of those Omni Negates, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be meta now. All right, all right. Um, let's move on to the side deck now. Uh, side deck three evenly matched and three Lightning Storm uh, for back row. Uh, for just those bad matchups because back row can be a little bit of a tough matchup. I had to play against a uh, Phantom Knight deck and they had like three Fog Blade set, but you were able to play around it a little bit using Cobalt so your monsters can't be targeted so you can still pop off a little bit uh, and still end up Zeusing their board uh, if you get it with enough materials before you overlay for it. 
And then you just have the two talents, which a lot of the times when I side to go second, I'm taking out the three Harpies Feather Storms. I'm normally taking out the Droll, depending on the matchup. I've been taking out even the Called by the Grave, the Instant Fusion, and even the Foolish Burial to put in talents and some of those other cards uh, just to help be able to break boards to play through. Um, have the two dark ruler because sometimes droplet isn't uh, good against certain matchups because you don't want to get rid of everything in your hand. Um, so I just run that as a two of just to have the diversity of two droplets or two dark ruler. I have the one copy of Mystic Mine because you can use it as a cross out target if you get mine played on you so you can still play. Or if you just see it, if you side it, if you're able to resolve it. If your opponent has three monsters on the field, you can just do your OTK combo with two monsters. They can't activate monster effects, and then you can just swing for about 8,000 damage. You have the one red reboot just to shut off the back row. Uh, and then you have uh, one copy of Valor, one copy of Imperm, which I think are the best hand traps coming up in the next format. With uh, the one copy of Forbidden Droplets and two. Alright, um... So is there a reason why you don't play, like, Twin Twisters, maybe Harpy's Feather Duster? Harpy's Feather Duster would be good to play. I just opted just to go for three Lightning Storm rather than just two. Uh, the nice thing is if I main the one Harpy's Feather Duster, if they pop the Harpy's Feather Storm, I could just search it. So that's something that I've just been play testing. Uh, this is still the early stages, and the side deck's still a work in progress right now, trying to figure out what's going to work best when uh, cards are actually released. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, we can go into the extract now. All right, you just have the one copy of a, uh, Independent Nightingale just for the instant fusion target. Uh, then you have three Recital Starling, which is really your enabler of the deck. It's soft once per turn, so it's per copy for the search. Uh, it just gets you a search of really any one, eight, one level one wing beast monster that you need. Uh, and then it also helps you pump up Assembled Nightingale with the materials to enable OTKs. And you can also use it just to crash into your opponent's monster um, and have them take the same amount of damage you do and then finish them off with Nightingale as well. Assembled Nightingale kind of speaks for itself. Just going to attack directly. Uh, if you don't OTK, it's just an easy way to turbo a Zeus out just to try to board wipe next card is the extra deck monster that makes this deck uh, really good and it allows it to be in that rogue category is because it's not a once per turn compulse and just with there's different two card combos you can do where you end on this when it has four to five bounces it'll have anywhere from 2000 to 2700 attack with those materials where it can't be targeted uh, by card effects and then it also the possession of it can't switch either with canary which actually comes up a lot with triple tap talents and then it has the recursion at the end where if it's just sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card uh you can target any monster any layer list in your graveyard and add it back to hand so it just gets you a resource for the next turn too if they can out it uh prom thrush just comes up against back row decks I use this and overlaid for this with Cobalt and a Canary just to force out the negate of an Orcus Crescendo, just to force out that negate by targeting it uh, because they couldn't Fog Blade it because of Cobalt. So I just used that to get rid of their Omni Negate so I could still pop off and break their board. Um, otherwise, it never really comes up unless they have a lot of back row. This is never really getting summoned at all. Uh, then we just have the two copies of Zeus. Uh, I like two. Three has never really come up. Come up a good bit, but normally once I get to the second copy at that point, the game's pretty much over. Then we have just the F-Zero package, uh, which you'll see in the combo video on just how you make this pretty easily. Then we have the one All Mirage, which I'm mainly using just uh, to get my normal summon monster into the graveyard so I can use it for Canary to target and special summon it back. It could also be Link Karibo. I just like All Mirage better right now uh, because it gives you the 
card destruction protection. So if I have the new Ensemble Blue Robin on the field that can't be targeted and they activate something like Lightning Storm, I just tribute it, chain it so it can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects just so I can keep it around on the field. That's why I like that Overlink Rebel. And then the last monster, this one's kind of up in the air. It hasn't come up too often. It's come up once to where I've went first, and if your hand's really nice, you can just summon Turquoise Warbler, uh, get your Cobalt, get your Search, and then you can just go into the Harpy monster if you have the Harpy's Feather Storm in hand, just so you can stop hand traps. You can activate it, stop all your opponent's hand traps, stop an Abiru because you have a Harpy monster on the field. Um, doesn't come up too often, um, but it was just something that I was trying out. All right, um, let's just hop right into the combos. I don't really have too many questions about this deck, to be honest. Um, I haven't tested this deck out with like all the new stuff, so I'm not really like too talented with this deck. I would say <laughs> like I know like the Tri Brigade bird up stuff, but I don't know like the bird stuff by itself really. But we yeah, we can hop into the combos now. All right, so this is just the first two-card combo, uh, just starting off with, for instance, Warbler and then the new Swag Tool. You just go ahead, you summon out the Warbler, use its effect, summon out the Celeste Wag Tool. You get the search for the new spell, Bird Call. You go on ahead and you overlay for the Recital Starling. You get your search for your Cobalt Sparrow. And the reason you do that is because Bird Call lets you special summon one with a different name from the one that you added from hand. So that's why you're adding this one here. So you go on ahead and activate Bird Call. Go on ahead and search a Sapphire. Then you get to Special Summon your Cobalt. You get to Search for a level 1. In this instance, this is where we got the, the Slow Bird. is Because it's just, with that 2 card combo, you still are going to have 3 other cards in hand. And this is just one of the instances where you can either use it to draw 2 or you can just use it as an extra material and i'll show you what i mean once we get a little bit further in the video so then we'll use sapphire to special summon both so we have a wing beast and here we're going to use the slow bird to overlay for another recital and the reason we do that is we could use the effect attribute it to draw to the next turn but when you do that you're sacrificing an additional interruption because then you won't get to use uh, Sapphire's effect to attach uh, another material from Graveyard to your Ensemble Blue Robin. So that's why we just used it for Recital Starling in this instance. So then we're going to use Recital. I'm going to go ahead and search out the Berry. And here is where you want to overlay for your F0. And that's because if your opponent decides to Nibiru you right here, you'll still be able to use uh, Berry effect to summon and you'll still be able to end on a three interruption uh, ensemble robin so that's why you want to do this right here then lastly just summon the berry canary you want to summon out the cobalt sparrow because you want to be able to give your monster the targeting protection and on summon, it gains the effect from Sapphire to attach an additional material. And then Celeste in the graveyard has its effect that you can target a Leerless monster and attach it as material once per turn. So at this point, it, its possession cannot be switched. It gains the additional 200 attack. And you have 5 bounces, and it can't be targeted either. And then you have your monster negate too. And then you just have your draw for next turn then as well. Yeah, I get you the reason about it. This is pretty good versus like combo. Like, I mean, th this is five bounces. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. This isn't once per turn. Yeah, it is. It's pretty funny when it uh when it pops off. I played it against Dragon Link, and they just like were like boot sector launch, special summon a rocket tracer, then just bounce it back. Just keep bouncing everything back to the hand, and then just save the F zero for the right target. Yeah, I, I haven't played against this card yet, but holy, I feel like if you don't see, like, I don't I don't even know, because you can't even, like, talents take it. You gotta, like, droplet this or something. This card could just yeah. be so annoyed. 
Yeah, that's why you want to use Canary for it is because I've had it come up to where I use the F0 first uh, and then they try to talents and take this just so they can link it away and out it, but Canary just stops that. So the, they have to take the F0 and try to do something from there. Well, uh, all right, let's just hop into the next combo now. So this combo, pretty sure it's another two card combo, right? It's another two card combo. It pretty much ends on the same thing, but this one just allows you to end on some additional follow up guaranteed besides the Ensemble Robin um, if they out something. Uh, and you still had those three other cards in hand too, so you could already have follow up, but this is guaranteed follow up. So you just start off and you go on ahead and you just grab the Celeste Wagtail and you summon the Cobalt. Use the effect, get Sapphire. And you want to normal summon that there. Uh, and that's just because this is going to give you protection against Valor and Imperm uh, because you have Cobalt as material. Uh, just so you can make sure you can get into some of your pieces before you get stopped early. You need to search your Warbler. And you summon Warbler and Sapphire. And since he was summoned from hand, you'll get the effect of special summon another one back from hand or graveyard. Now you can use that effect to search out your spell and trap. Now here is where I just chose. You can search for your follow-up here. Or what you can do uh, for another bird call. Or you can search for bird sanctuary. Going turn one, you're never going to use the bird sanctuary effect to target two winged beast exceeds monsters and attach one of them to the other it's never come up going first it's really just used like if you already had a second copy of bird call in your hand and you have the follow-up you can grab it just to get a free draw one uh towards the end that's why we just grab that here just to kind of show that off when we overlay we're going to search for the berry and then here again, just to kind of stop anything from, if you get in a beer route, you still have something to do. Just go ahead and you overlay for your F0. You activate that. You use the effect because it's any Xyz monster that has three or more materials. So you just get your free draw one then. And then you just use Canary. You target out the Cobalt to get the targeting protection. You have it to where possession can't be switched. And then you just do the same thing, and then you get to attached to and you get the wag tail effect so you again have five bounces and then if you didn't have this you either got the free draw one or you have additional follow-up so it just gets you some more resources yeah pretty much like the first combo but just like a little bit better yeah this one is just showing that like instant fusion and just any monster that really you can normal summon whether it be cobalt or this basically gets you to the same thing uh, I didn't show the one combo fully through this, so I'll just talk through it once we get there. So you just use that summon and out. You can burn for 500. Normal summon. And you go for the recital. Use the recital effect. You search for the berry. And then you use the berry to summon that back out. You get the search then for your Lyraless Bird Call. And then you go on ahead and you get your search again. Now what you could do here is, uh, if we pause right here, if you had these in attack and you were going second, the one thing that you can do is, is you can just pump up your opponent's monsters uh, by 600. I even tried out running like Kaijus in the side deck, the ones that have like 3300 attack, tributing off something of theirs with a negate, and then you like pump it up to over 4000. And... Then when you go into your battle phase, instead of going for the F0 combo, you just summon an, an assembled Nightingale, and you would end up searching for the Bird Sanctuary and using its effect to overlay one of these for Assembled, which then Assembled would have about 800 to 1,000 attack and be able to attack anywhere from four to five times. So then you would just attack directly with Assembled for anywhere from four to 5,000 damage. And then you just crash the last Recital Starling into their monster. You'd take about 4k, but then they take it too, and then you just win from there. So that's one of the OTKs that you can do.
And then this is just the, the last combo. This is kind of my favorite combo to do. It just sets up an OTK uh, the very next turn while shutting down your opponent's monster effects. So that's where you just normal summon and you go for the All Mirage. Use Berry to summon out Cobalt. Use Cobalt just to search. And a lot of these combos are really redundant with what the deck does because they all do the same thing. Just swarm the field, recital Starling, search for your extenders, and continue to pop off. You get your Wagtail. Go on ahead and summon that. And you get your search for your spell. And then you attach and search again. And then you search Warbler here just because you'll be able to special summon it with Bird Call. And then Warbler's effect is going to trigger, which is going to allow you to reborn something. But before you do that, you overlay for F0. So if you would get in a Beerud here, you still have a play when you summon Warbler off Bird Call. And here you're just searching for another uh, Canary because you're just getting guaranteed follow up for the next turn um, just to go for the OTK. Summon that for the targeting protection. And then you just go for Assembled. Then you just go on ahead and use Wagtail's effect to attach it so it has three materials. And then you're going to set. Now, this is where you would pass turn on just the Monster Negate. And what I like to do is, when they're in their standby phase, so I'm not playing into talents, I'll go on ahead and activate Assembled Nightingale's effect. And I'll detach the Celeste Wagtail. The reason that I do that is because I want it in Graveyard for the next turn for Barry Canary um, as a target to Special Summon to search the other spell that I need. And then you can choose to activate it in Standby Phase. You can activate the Harpy's Feather Storm to turn off all their monster effects, or you can wait for them to activate something or do something and then turn off their monster effects. It's your preference. If they, are, you know they're running Kaijus or something like that, that they can just get rid of your uh, your assembled, then you can just go on ahead and shotgun it. But a lot of the times I wait just to see what I'm playing against or what they might have. Yeah. And then... This, like, this card, if you flip it, it's so dumb yeah. because, like, you can't, like, stop it without Red Reboot. You know? Like, yeah. Skill Drain, like, that card's broken, but, like, at least you can, like, pop it somehow... But this is just like, no, nah, your whole turn's just over with. I actually hate this yeah. card so much whenever, like, Flunder players <laughs> flip it on me. It's so yeah. annoying. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's so annoying. But, you know, it's just one of those blowout cards. It's just like, if you see it most and you resolve it, most of the time you're just winning the game. Yeah. Like, you, you can't lose when your opponent is pretty much just, like, skipping a turn. No. <laughs> and then, so, you go ahead and you'd flip that. They'd pass turn. Just activate that, activate that. Then you go ahead and you draw for turn. You use berry effect. You target the Wagtail. Go on ahead and you special summon. You get the effect to search. And this is where you'd search the bird sanctuary. And you'd activate the sanctuary. You'd overlay for another recital. And then you use its effect on summon targeting assembled. So it's going to gain 600 attack. And... Use that effect to go on ahead and search. And the reason you can do that is because you can just use Wagtail's effect to go on ahead and attach itself to Assembled. And you can just use that to overlay. So now you have it to where it can't be targeted by card effects. Bird Sanctuary is going to get you another free draw one. And you have three, four, five materials. So it's at a uh, thousand attack. And then you have the 600 attack boost. So you have 1,600 damage directly um, that you can attack five times, which is 8,000. Exactly. Dang. <laughs> yeah, that that's tough. Like, yeah, I don't want to lose to Assembled. Like, I don't know, I, whenever I see this card, I just think of, like, 800 damage from Drytron. But now it's, like... Yeah. The card that's going to, like, OTK me when I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah. And then that's it for the combo video. I was just showing the next hand. This hand wouldn't be good going first at all. Um, you have some things you can do. You have, like, Nib and Called By. But then the next card that you draw, which is...
hard call, just go on ahead and it enables you to combo off into your plays. Yeah, just like an unfortunate brick. Yeah. But the What's deck's funny? now 40 cards, so now you won't brick. <laughs> That's right. That's why I cut it down for consistency purposes. Uh, the funny thing is about the slow bird is that I've had it come up a couple of times to where I end up drawing my one of Nibiru. And then since Nibiru's level 11 and the token's level 11... If I'm like short that one extender, I can just free special summon uh, the slow bird out and then normal summon something else since it only has to have two monsters with the same level on the field. So if you Nibiru and they keep the token, you can just free special summon that out and then normal summon and then go into recital and combo off. That's like a that's a cool interaction. I like that. That's kind of dirty. Like you nib yeah. your opponent, you slap him with this, and then you're also going to slap him with a slow bird. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, is there anything you want to say before we uh, hop off here? Uh, I just want to say thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I'm going to continue to play test. Uh, I can send you some deck profiles with any updates that I have that you can share on the channel whenever you get the chance. And if anybody wants to play test against me or ask me any other questions, they can feel free to message me on DB. Yep. Uh, Stardust01 on DB. You can go ahead and message them. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this with me. Uh, I think I learned some things through this, like some interactions, some combos through this. I didn't really know the combos, but I feel like now I have like a better grasp of like how to hand trap this deck if I do play against it, or if I decide to like test it myself. I have like a a starting ground, and, like a feel like a decent grasp on like what the deck does, what I'm trying to like achieve throughout a turn. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And uh, the DB Grinder, signing off. Peace. Have a nice day.